Hello guys, welcome to another Pathology. Let's talk about your story in Psychology. My name is Cahya. My name is Safina. My name is Bianca. My name is Regista. And in the last episode, we talk about some psychology terms as well as in this episode because the series is still ongoing. We're grateful, thank God. And yesterday, we opened a question box in our Instagram story in the theme of social loving. And a lot of you guys have come to speak up and give us um, one of a kind story. Thank you, we appreciate it. And um, we have reached out some one of you to tell the story further to us and ask for the permission if it is okay to be the main story of the podcast. But... um. On a side note, they wish to remind us an anonymous. But before that, what do we know about social loving? Can you tell the viewers about it, B? Sure, so from the very trusted resources, social loving is a psychology term of someone who puts less effort on putting in group but tends to work really well on their own. The cost of social loving can vary, but we can explain some, right guys? So the first one is group size. Usually, the bigger the group is, the other members tend to rely on the more competent member, when in reality, all of the members have the same job. Does anyone else want to explain it further? Poor communication is the most crucial cause. Social lovers tend to feel unheard and unneeded because their ideas is not received well by the members. So they feel like their work is a waste and they just don't do their work altogether. And it all happened because of the lack of communication between the group. Yeah, and last but not least is unclear goals. Like the absence of important goals and plan to achieve them can be cause group participants to feel like, you know, like feel demotivated. Right. So, after we explain it, the causes of social loving, just like we already told you, we will tell you the story of one of our friends who already shared tired story with us. Okay, so I will tell you the story. Hi, I am in 12th grade and it's the most hectic time in my life. Preparation for finals, preparation for entering college, plus the school project that has to be in groups. Sadly, I'm destined to be with the people who are not responsible, who put so little effort about either helping the other team members or the process. When we had a talk about the project in our group chat, no one gave a response. When we scheduled an offline meeting, no one was cooperative and they only thought it was a casual hangout. To be honest, I'm really done with it and I want to tell the teachers, but the condition forces me not to. Those kids hold a big power in school, so I cannot guarantee that I will live in peace because they really can do anything they want. So what should I do in this position? Thank you. First of all, we are really sorry that you went through this. Yeah, and the condition does sound bad. Hmm, I think we can give you some advice. Anyone to start first? Yeah, I have an advice. So for my consideration, the solution could be prioritizing communication. Like we all know that communication is key for any relationship friend relationship, family relationship, even in group project or anything that involves many people, communication is important, right? Yes. So I hope you and your friends can improve communication among team members. Open and effective communication can help overcome misunderstandings and improve communication within the team. So uh, my point is for the sake of the team, for the sake of the project that you have to do, it can be discussed nicely. You can talk to them, you can give them understanding, but I know, I know it's maybe difficult for you, but uh, how do we know if you never try? So you should try. And I know you can do it, so I think. Uh, that's not true, but you can also create a clear goal. All members must have the same and clear goals. When everyone knows what the group wants to accomplish, it can be simple from them to allocating responsibilities, collaborate, and communicate between each other. 
Yeah, and may I add, you can also try to respect each other's work and don't label any team member as unresponsible. The motivation can happen really easily, so it's better if we set the expectation bar in a neutral state so they won't feel any pressure of either doing too well or too bad, so their contribution isn't too much or too little. And I think it also works on yourself too, so don't be too harsh on yourself. To follow up, I think it's best to discuss it and ask what the problem is in the group so they want to work together because by know what the problem is we can solve it well so that they can work together as a group yeah so just like everything else communication is key but if any of the advice has been done even if they hold a big power in the school don't be afraid to tell the teachers because you and your feelings matter Oh, that's all right, Self. You hold a place in this world too, so don't overthink too much. And really hope this podcast can help you through the trouble that you have. And we hope you and your group can solve this problem well, and your friends can realize the mistakes they've made. Well, with that being said, I think it's the end of this episode. Oh, so sad. But do not fret, because Podcology will always accompany your Mondays. And thank you so much for you who heard or watched this podcast video. We hope you will stay in tune for another episode. See you next time. Bye-bye.